What's up, precious morsels? Welcome back to another riveting spray paint tutorial. Um, I'd been sitting around thinking about this one for a hot minute. It's something I stumbled upon with making textures even faster and easier. I'm sure you've seen uh, my previous videos that I show you like using paper, phone book paper, newspaper, and such to get the you know ground textures, planet textures, those sort of things. But I stumbled upon this even faster trick that I just I had to share with people because I've been getting a lot of great feedback from folks out there um, a lot of help uh, I've been experiencing a lot of help you know from my videos and with this technique this should make it a lot easier for a lot of you guys out there just getting started when uh, using paper and stuff can get kind of complicated and a little tricky so I've been doing a lot of paintings on canvases and just like you know those cheap canvases from Michaels um, I'm getting a lot into like oil painting, acrylic painting. I still put some spray paint stuff on there. But what's great about these canvases is that they come in, you know, packs of like four or five, but they're also wrapped in plastic. And what I've started messing around with is taking the plastic and using that for my textures. And I show you right now, it really, it's uh, it's light years easier than using the paper. So I'm just going to throw some color down real quick and give you a quick demonstration of how this works because I mean I want you to be able to take this and run with it you know as fast as possible. So here I'm just going to throw some blue, a little bit of blue, and why not some green just for fun, I should have shaken that more, happy little green, there we go. I've been using a lot of Montana gold paint and stuff lately in my paintings uh, just because the color saturation is so much better. So here I got one here, I was already partially using it. Just the plastic from around the canvas, right? Throw some black down. Make sure that's under the lens good. And now you can just come in here, make sure you got a clean spot. And kind of see it it's lightly over the top, no big deal. Pull away, instant texture. It's already kind of drying fast though. I got a, a bit of a breeze coming at me here. Let's wet it up some more press it down a bit harder and then look I mean instant quick easy textures now a lot of that paint's going to come up off the plastic so if you want to reuse this you got to be careful because I mean you can get it to come off if you want lighter areas of texture with that I don't know if you got something creative you can come up with great but if you're going to take off more texture than that like say you didn't get enough on the first go go to a clean spot same deal make sure you wet it up and just you know hit it again add a little more pressure and just kind of keep peeling off until you get what you want but it's like you don't have to do anything because the the plastic already crumples up and creates all the little texture lines i hope you can see that well and you just keep working it so that's it pure simple texture don't have to do anything about it and what's cool is you can get your hand in there and really kind of work it to just you know pick up certain areas that's kind of dry now so it's not gonna but you can get a lot of like you know workability with just you know messing with that also cool grocery bags same deal come at it lighten it up boom instant textures you kind of keep working at it keep pulling it off like I said always switch to a clean spot so there I mean everybody goes to the grocery store you end up with tons of these things I know I've got a ton of them in my pantry that, you know I'm saving for a day for I don't know when but now I can whip them out and start using them on my spray paint painting so before they end up in the trash I mean uh, you know obviously these bags you know recycle them you know try to be more envir environmentally conscious but if you're gonna use them I mean you know, at least get a use out of them before they go in the trash can right or in the recycle bin so that's it plain like quick easy textures just using simple plastic bags and stuff like that. And I got one more real quick I want to show you. This I thought was cool. So this goes back to the paper thing. What's cool about the paper thing is depending on how you crumple the paper, it's going to determine how those lines look or how your texture lines are. So if you find like take like a focal point here and sort of twist around it, you know, crumple it all in that direction right so now you come at this come on throw some colors down see look how that color pops it's so much so much better than like Krylon and everything um just throw some colors down black it out again 
want it to be a little more wet, so I'm hit this clear. Like I said, you open this back up, you can already kind of see you have your striations in it. So you come at this, drop it down in there, a little pressure, pull away. Now you see what you get there is all your striation lines kind of feed in toward this central point. And I mean, that works really great for like anything kind of planetary textures. Or if you're trying to create like an impact crater site, you know, something like that. I mean, um, yeah, any number of those, I mean, if you're doing like a nebula or space scene, you want to put like a black hole or something toward the middle, but you want it to look like everything's sucking into it, then how you crumple your paper, you know, if you can get your striation, your, your lines all moving toward a central point and place that down, then it's just going to add so much more, uh, you know, character, you know, realism and, and depth to your paintings when it looks like everything's actually going on. It's hard to create like a black hole and the idea that everything's sucking into it, but then everything else is kind of static, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> static and, <coughs> excuse me, geez, static and unaffected around it, you know? So something else there for you to practice with and, um, yeah, you know, and see what you can work with. I mean, you can, you can do any number of, of crazy things with how you're going to crumple up the paper and how you're going to use it. But just something to consider when you're doing textures. It doesn't have to be, a, you know, a special little technique and rolling it around on there. I mean, you see it done easy enough, but really the plastic has been light years simpler. I use that a lot now, mainly because I end up with a lot of that plastic sitting around because I go through a lot of canvas. But um, there you go. There you have it, guys. Really quick. Textures revisited. Made even simpler. And hopefully, you know, some new ideas. And uh, I'd like to see what you guys come up with creatively. So please, you know, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. You can find me on my Instagram. Um, tag me and what you come up with and see. I'd like to see what you're, what you're doing. So uh, my Instagram should be linked down below. I'll try to put a link in the video or something. But uh, Ash underscore Schultz underscore art. And that's it, guys. Thanks again. Uh, see you soon with another riveting spray paint tutorial.